When trying to lose weight, which is most important, diet or exercise? This is what a survey found recently. The vast majority of those trying to lose or maintain weight believe that both monitoring food and beverage consumption and physical activity are equally important in weight management and weight loss. Most people go with equally important, then exercise, and then diet, and most people are wrong. Identified as one of the most common misconceptions about obesity in this recent review, the confusion about the leverage of exercise on body weight. Unfortunately, the energy balance equation, you know, uh, calories in have to equal calories out, suggests that energy intake and energy expenditure occupy equivalent roles in determining energy balance, when in fact the factors governing energy intakes influence the energy balance far more powerfully than the factors uh, determining you know, resting energy expenditures. And what we put in our mouths is most important. For example, to walk off the calories found in a single pat of butter, you'd have to add an extra 700 yards to your stroll that evening. A quarter-mile jog for each sardine we put in our mouth, and that's just the edible part. And those who choose to eat two chicken legs better get out on their own two legs and run an extra three miles that day to outrun weight gain. And that's for steamed chicken, skin removed. Erythritol, the too-good-to-be-true non-toxic, low-calorie, tooth-friendly sweetener that may even act as an antioxidant, what's the catch? Well, there are three ways that all non-chloric sweeteners could theoretically be harmful independent of their specific chemistry. Over the years, several large-scale prospective cohort studies found a positive correlation between artificial sweetener use and weight gain, meaning the people that drank the most diet soda, for example, gained the most weight. Now, the most common explanation for this counterintuitive finding is what's called reverse causation. And people aren't fat because they drink diet soda. They drink diet soda because they're fat. But there are at least three other less benign alternative explanations. The first is called overcompensation for expected caloric reduction. If you covertly switch someone's soda for diet soda without them knowing it, their caloric intake drops. Obviously, they're not drinking all that sugar anymore. But what if you tell them what you did? People who knowingly are consuming artificially, artificial sweeteners may actually end up eating more calories. Why? Because they're like, hey, I'm drinking diet soda, so I can you know, have two pieces of cake. In this study, they gave people an artificially sweetened cereal for breakfast, but only told half of the group what they did. As you can see, when it came to lunchtime, the aspartame-informed group ate significantly more than the aspartame-naive group that didn't know any different. 